Hey guys, so some of the uh, the wound packing stuff here we're gonna we're gonna cover for you. So if you do have a bit of a budget and you're able to purchase stuff, there's a lot of good product out there. So this one, of course, is um, uh, very functional. It's um, a big uh, GSW. It's got the bone in it as well. Uh, it's made by True Clot. There's lots of different devices out there. It's um, very rubbery. It feels very similar if you're going to be pushing into uh, somebody's uh, body. Um, these work really well. There is some other styles of kits out there on depending on the types of high fidelity sims you want to do. This is a good one, which we haven't tried quite yet, but I have seen it in use. We're going to try it later on. Uh, this one, you actually don over one of your shoulders and arms, and you actually have to put the tourniquet application on to get the, uh, the flow to stop. So if you, but these are quite pricey. So if you do have some money and you're willing to, uh, to spend, these are some good products. Um, these are all the wet ones. If you recall, we talked about wet and dry. So there is these uh, leg logs that are really good for just a quick demonstration uh, in schools with some kids and stuff. Uh, they give you a few different options of puncture wounds and slashes as well. But these are not to be used with anything wet. <clears throat> so wound packing, again, uh, all we're going to do, yes, Scott, I'll trade you a spot. Yes, sir. So if you can get your hands on just some, some basic roller gauze, works great for training purposes. Uh, then you can get into some of the other training models. Again, it's money. Uh, so this is just an inert uh, bleeding control dressing. Um, there's Z-folded and there's rolled that you can get. But training purposes, these are the best. And when you're building your own kit, any sort of uh, uh, wound packing gauze like this can be used as well for your personal kit. That's what I, I have in some of mine and Scott's got some of his yeah. as well. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna identify that bleed, right? We're gonna make sure that everything's safe, 911's been called, or we're, we are 911, we're coming in and helping. Uh, we're gonna identify that bleed, so I'm gonna cut and expose. I'm gonna see that blood, so I'm gonna identify it, the hole, yeah, here it is. I'm gonna stick that finger right in there. I can feel, it feels pretty like a very large cavity. I'm gonna take my gauze, and I'm just gonna start shoving it in. Some people, you can throw this down to the side or over your shoulder. I wanna keep a finger in every time I do this. So I'm not lining up. And we're gonna do it fairly quickly. And as you start filling that cavity with that gauze, it's gonna start bulking up. And any excess I have, so as I start filling, if I need more, I'll, do, I'll shove this in, I'll grab more. So now I've got excess amount. I'm gonna put, fold it up over top of the, the hole. I'm gonna put a uh, hand over top of it, a lot of pressure, maybe even two hands. I'm gonna hold direct pressure very firmly for at least 60 seconds before I release it. And then I'm gonna slowly release it after that time frame has passed. And then we're gonna dress it with uh, maybe like a modular bandage or some other nice type of S-march or pressure wrap at that point. If it starts bleeding again, try more pressure or if you need to pack it more go ahead and pack it more and that is it yeah i think it's important to note when you're the if you're the person doing the blood is is once if you can see them doing the demo right and they're sorry, they're doing the technique right um you shouldn't be like continually squirting the blood because i mean this is this is pressurized there's ones you can get i believe that will actually you can actually stop stop the bleed in there but um you know we just want them to get that that, that proper skill. technique, that yeah. muscle skill of, of, of putting that uh, wound packing in. So don't, yeah, don't keep like, yeah, you're not doing it right and keep the spring blood because you're, you're basically going to make them believe that this uh, this technique isn't working. And we know it works. We've seen yeah. when we, we watch the video of it working. Um, so this is a great prop. And I, I, I believe this is a really good prop to do, obviously, um, you know, one feet at a time and in less kind of um, dynamic environments. And if you need to do a whole bunch, like if you're doing you know, 15, 20 students, yeah. this is gonna probably get pretty cost prohibitive. So what we what we did, like we talked about in the classroom, is we can make something out of a yoga block. Yoga block's good because you can reuse it, um, you can cut holes in it, and you know ultimately it's like six bucks. If it, if it starts uh, breaking down, or if someone breaks it, or you cut the wrong hole, you can throw away a new one. Um, so what we've done is we got that, that you know, $20 pump over there, and uh, you put it on the ground, and then we can take that next level up. We can take the next step up into that training environment of, of making the people do um, more realistic training. So I'm gonna get Todd to do the same thing. Do you got a wound packing lesson? Yeah, I got some right here, go ahead. So 
So Todd's gonna start over there, and what we would, would have done, we've, we would have preloaded everybody. We would have talked to them about, when you first come up, maybe you don't have your first aid kit out, but you still need to stop that bleed. You still need to get that direct pressure on. So we're gonna drop our knee down on that on that wound. And what's gonna happen is, I'm gonna start the flow. As Todd walks up, he's gonna see that wound. If he's gonna drop his knee down, so that's gonna be that nice, sharp, direct pressure. He's gonna access his uh, his IFAC, or in this case, just his pocket. He's gonna get the wound packing material ready. And I have stopped, I'm gonna stop the flow of blood. You won't be able to see it, because Todd's gonna be kneeling on it. And then, as he lifts his leg, I'm gonna resume the flow, and he's gonna do the wound packing he just did. If this was an officer, he would come in, same thing, he'd put his knee down, he'd have his gun out, put his gun away, um, take his knee off, start wound packing, and gun back out right away. So we can, like we said, we can scale this to any sort of first responder, any sort of civilian. That's right. Just like that video we watched earlier uh, with the mountain biker, the first thing he did was uh, he threw his knee on, started getting that pressure, uh, and then he counter pressured as well because it wasn't working enough. So it's the exact same principle. The first thing we want to be doing, if you can, is drop that direct pressure on it. It's right in those learning steps in, in the Stop the Bleed course. So get that direct pressure on first, and then start pulling out your gauze or tourniquet, depending on what it is, if it's a junctional wound or a uh, uh, leg wound or an arm wound. So I don't even wait usually until the student gets ready. I just start going with blood, and he's gonna have to fix it. Come fix right. it. So I'm gonna come in. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop my knee down on it. Thanks, Scott. <laughs> I'm gonna pull out my Wound packing. Pull it off. Let's see, it's coming out again. Let's stick that finger right in, find it. I've identified it, and I'm just going to start shoving this in. Finger, thumb, whatever is most comfortable. The biggest thing, practice, right? So now I'm starting to fill that void pretty good. These yoga blocks are fantastic for this because it's nice and tight. And any excess, I'm gonna fold and cover and then give them a direct pressure. And for, for what we're using in these, in these uh, pumps, we're just using some water and a little bit of food coloring. Um, it doesn't have to be super like bloody or messy because um, it, it just gets that, that memory and, and just gets that fluid and you're feeling, you're feeling that, that feedback of, of that liquid. Exactly. It's just that, it's just another way to level up your training. Like you can literally start out teaching this course with these dry packers that we talked about, right? It, it's, I could still simulate it and just do it dry. But as we know, especially firefighters and volunteer firefighters, we like those high fidelity sims. You know, make it as interactive and as realistic as you can. So when we do our scenarios, um, like Scott will teach, he'll have an officer down or a member down, and we go in and then we'll have this beside them, and then they can, they can pack it right, right from there. Yeah, and depending on where it is, like I'll, I'll make sure it's up, you know, in that junctional area, because we're, just, of course, this is a junctional wound. I mean, you could still wound pack a, uh, a limb, but we're gonna kind of identify it as a junctional area, so we could put it up by the, by the hip, yeah. have the person laying down, and then as they come in, they, they start wound packing. And maybe they don't have, maybe they come in and they're just a civilian and they're not prepared, they don't have an eye factor, they don't have gloves on, and maybe they just have a rag on them, or, or they have to rip their shirt. Okay, same thing, you're, still, you're still gonna go in, you're still gonna go in and you're still gonna wound pack the same, the same way. Everything's gonna be the same, it's just gonna be a, a t-shirt now, okay? It's gonna be a little bit more rigid, and we're gonna see the exact same method. Wound pack, wound pack, wound pack, you know, clean shirt, yeah. anything to get in there, anything to stop that. And again, that's in the course material. Uh, so if you don't have any of those, these uh, other supplies available, they tell you use a clean cloth or a rag or your shirt, you know, whatever, whatever you need to do. These are uh, life interventions, life critical interventions, right? So we're doing that to stop this massive hemorrhage. Um, the other thing to note too is after we dress it, we've talked about putting another dressing over top of it, uh, or if it is just a wound where you can throw a tourniquet on, we're not just gonna leave that wound alone. Uh, if you have time, as the other first responders are coming in, then you could still pack it afterwards if you have that supply still. You can still finish uh, dressing that wound. 